Now let us look at the exchange of gases between lungs and blood. Gaseous exchange. So already we learned that inside the lungs the structural or the functional unit of the lung is alveoli. So alveoli are the fine sac like structures where the bronchioles are end with a sac like structures called as alveoli. These alveoli are one cell thick that is very thin they have only one cell in their covering. So this is the structure of an alveoli. You can see that this is a bronchiole extending and here is the sac like structure called as alveoli. Now this alveoli is very closely associated or very adjacent to a blood vessel. This is a blood vessel. This hole, this part is a blood vessel and this, this part is an alveoli. This is alveoli. So now let us see how the exchange of gases takes place. So whenever we inhale the air enters into the alveoli, the air is rich in oxygen, it contains more amount of oxygen. We know the composition of air, you see that inhaled air, it contains 21 percentage of oxygen, 21 percentage of oxygen is there in this air. Now in the blood vessel, red blood cells are there. And these red blood cells they carry that carbon dioxide from the tissues from the body to this area lungs area. Of course some carbon dioxide comes in the form of carbonate in the blood that is mixed in the plasma but some carbon dioxide is carried by the blood vessels. If you look at these both places blood vessel and alveoli now let us understand the concentrations of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So when you take the air inside, the air contains 21 percentage of carbon ox uh, oxygen. So now the air in the alveoli is rich in oxygen. If you look at the blood, the blood is deprived of oxygen, less oxygen. Because oxygen is already used up and the blood which comes to these lungs is having only carbon dioxide. So it is deprived. The concentration of oxygen is less here. So the, con the oxygen present in the alveoli is absorbed into the blood vessel. Here the red blood cells RBC they contain a special pigment called as hemoglobin which is having a strong affinity to bind with oxygen. Its chemical nature is bind with oxygen. So hemoglobin is a pigment, color pigment, gives red color. We see plants green in color because of chlorophyll. It's a color pigment but it is green color pigments. In the same way in animals blood also there is a pigment called as hemoglobin which is having the binding capacity with oxygen. It binds the oxygen strongly and carry the oxygen to the cells. So such hemoglobin it binds the oxygen whatever is diffused into the blood vessel. So from the lungs that is from the alveoli oxygen enter the blood vessels by the process of diffusion. So as soon as it enters, who is binding? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has got iron ion. So this iron has got the affinity to bind with oxygen. So the oxygen is bound to hemoglobin. Now the hemoglobin is called as oxyhemoglobin. Hemoglobin with oxygen is called as oxyhemoglobin. Now this oxyhemoglobin is carried to tissues. So inside the tissues if this is the blood vessel and here is the tissue or the cell. So from the blood vessel the oxygen is diffused into the cells because cells they are carrying out their activities. Whatever the already oxygen present in the cell is used up. So now the cell is deprived of oxygen. As soon as the blood vessel carrying more oxygen then the oxygen is diffused into the cell. And as inside the cell cellular respiration is going on carbon dioxide is already produced inside the cell that carbon dioxide is diffused into the blood vessels in the tissues. So now this blood 
with carbon dioxide again it will come back to the lungs that is in the alveoli area where carbon dioxide is released into the alveoli and oxygen is absorbed. So this release and absorption takes place by a process called as a diffusion. We studied about this diffusion uh, in the lesson cell membrane or plasma membrane in your ninth grade. So there you have learned how the materials are transported across the membrane. So here also there is a membrane, very thin membrane, one cell thick organs are here. So through these membranes, the transport of gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide takes place by the process of diffusion. So in this way, the exchange of gases takes place due to their differences in their concentration. Due to the difference in their concentration, the gases always diffuse from higher concentration to lower concentration. So as the blood is having less oxygen, the oxygen from the alveoli diffuses into the blood. As the CO2 concentration is more in the blood compared to alveoli, it goes back to the alveoli. CO2 goes back to alveoli. So if you see the inhaled air, it contains 21 percent of oxygen. So inhaled air, whereas if you observe the exhaled air, it contains 16 percent of oxygen. 16 percent of oxygen. So why, what is the difference between inhaled and exhaled air? In the exhaled air, the oxygen is used up, consumed by the organism for respiration. If you see that inhaled air, it contains 0.04 percent of CO2, whereas exhaled air, it contains 4 percent of CO2. Whereas, both inhaled and exhaled air, they contain similar amount of nitrogen. Nitrogen, nothing happens to nitrogen in our respiratory system. It does not interfere with any exchanges because we do not have any molecules which have uh, binding capacity with nitrogen. So the nitrogen percentage is same, but the percentage of oxygen and carbon dioxide are varied. That is because of the concentration differences in the blood and alveoli. So in this way, the exchange of gases between alveoli and blood, blood and tissues takes place in our body.